So let's try to do that and focus on sequence to sequence modeling. So there's a sequence, A, B, C. This is the input sequence and it's gonna output the output sequence. With recurrent neural networks, we know that an input sequence is gonna go in, X1 up until XT, and then a sequence of the same length is gonna come out. So it's gonna be X1 up until XT, Y1 up until YT. That's the role of an RNN, regardless of the version that you're gonna use. So a simple RNN without any bells and whistles is just uh, you take the current input, you take the hidden state, you multiply them by weight, you do softmax, or sorry, you do sigmoid, it's gonna give you your hidden. And then if you want to get an output, you just multiply it by the corresponding vector of, the prop of an appropriate size. That's good, and it's gonna work for language modeling, because for language modeling, you're gonna input a sequence of uh, this length, and you're gonna expect a sequence of the same length. But for translation, you have sequences of different length from the input to the output. So that's your input, A, B, C, and then the output is uh, W, X, Y, Z. And we learned how to deal with that. First, we are gonna take the input sequence, we're gonna encode it, in, encode the entire sequence in a single vector. So now we are forgetting about attention. So we are putting everything in a single vector. And then the rest of it is a usual RNA. So it's exactly similar to above or a modified version of it with some new entries. Once you have that, it's gonna give you your model that you can use to write down your likelihood or you can use to do your translation during inference time. So what is the contribution of this paper and how does it push the state of the art compared to the previous paper? You're gonna use two different LSTMs. Actually, the previous paper was doing the same thing. So you had two different LSTMs for input and output sequences. The second change is that you're doing it deep. So you're stacking multiple LSTMs on top of each other. So both at the input and output layers. So you're gonna have multiple LSTMs. So these are stacked LSTMs on top of each other. What other change? This turned out to be the most important one. You're gonna reverse the order of your input sequence. So if your input sequence is, uh, if you want to translate from A, B, C to alpha, beta, gamma, you keep the output sequence in the same order and then you change your input sequence and reverse it. It's gonna be C, B, A. And the idea is that by the time that you're arriving here during back propagation, the words that you're interested in are closer rather than being far further away from where you want to do your translation. So that was the idea, just reversing the order of the inputs of the input sequence. These are the three major contributions. The training is the same as before. You have a pairs of you have a corpus of the pairs of target and source sentences, English and French. And then for solving that maximization problem during inference, we are gonna solve it using a greedy optimization algorithm. And the greedy optimization algorithm is beam search. So if you don't know about beam search, there is another video that I want you to watch. This one is also 15 minutes and it's gonna give you an intuition of why uh, this is working. Okay, so there is a way to solve this maximization problem. Beam search, that's how you solve that problem. Let's see some numbers. These are the numbers from the previous paper, 28.45. As you can see, this is still far behind the baseline system. The baseline system is Moses. It's, uh, it, it's not using any deep learning at all. But then the idea is you want to use neural networks to beat this baseline system. So if you are doing research in neural networks, you want to beat that baseline system. If you use a single forward LSTM with beam size of 12, so beam size is a hyperparameter that you need for your beam search, that's gonna give you 26.17, still below these two numbers. If you reverse the order, so this uh, 0.3, it turns out that's a very important contribution. So it's gonna give you a huge boost and it's gonna beat the previous state of the art using neural networks. But then it's a matter of ensembling. Even if you ensemble five reverse LSTM with beam sizes of one and 12, you are still below the baseline, so the baseline is very hard to beat. 
if you use ensemble of five with beam size two and beam size 12, and then you finally manage to beat the baseline system with an ensemble of five reversed LSTMs. And the beam size is helping a little bit, but then beyond that, the beam size is not going to help that much. It's going to sl slow down your translation system significantly. So they went through a lot of trouble to beat that number, but then there was a, not a second idea. Let's use the baseline. The baseline is going to score pairs of sentences for us. It actually is going to propose uh, good translations for us. And then what we're going to do is we are going to use a neural network system to re-score. Let's say the baseline system is going to give you 1,000 good translations. So out of those 1,000, we are going to sort them according to the probabilities that are coming out of our neural network system. That's going to help you choose the best among those 1,000 recommendations for your translation, and then just report that. So we are going to report that. We are going to report the other number. And uh, we are easily beating the baseline system by re-scoring it. So you can use your neural networks to re-score a previous model. And then if you re-score using five reverse LSTMs, you are getting closer to the state of the art. But it's still, you are far from it. So these baselines are really hard to beat. And don't worry this, about this oracle. This oracle is if the baseline system is proposing 1,000 translations, and then you have a human to order them, this is the best number that you're going to get out of test score. This is the maximum. So there is still a lot of room for improvement. And for neural networks, it's very hard for them to beat usual machine learning. Okay. And here is an example of the translation that you're going to see. So that's the ground truth. That's what the model is predicting. And that's not a bad translation if you want to look at it qualitatively. Any questions? So what is the message that I want to convey is that people are working really hard or have been working really hard to beat the previous state of the art. Could you uh, explain again the logic behind reversing the, the input sequence? So there is this tendency for recurrent neural networks, and it happens during backpropagation that you start forgetting. So you forget what happened. By reversing the order, the first word in your sentence is closer to where you want to do your translation. Let's say at this point, you need to have access to the first point or the second word in the initial sentence, in the source sentence. So now the information is closer. Rather than going to the first word, you're now closer to the first word here. So that's a problem with the backpropagation. So the gradients tend to vanish the longer the length of your sentences, because these are deep model in time. So that's the intuition. You want to have your sentence, the first word in your sentence, closer to where you start translating. But that's just an intuition. I don't know how much it's going to make sense or no. Okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, I, I think that. And the whole idea of using uh, LSTMs and gated recurrent units is because these recurrent neural networks tend to forget. Another way to put it is there is, there is uh, vanishing gradient problems. So for the rescoring, is it that uh, the original sentences each had their own like probabilities or scores assigned to them, and then you use the LSTM to recompute those probabilities and then it reshuffles which ones are actually most probable. Exactly. So that's a great point. So you have pairs of source and target. For, the, for a particular source, the baseline is going to give you multiple targets. Given a pair of a source and a target, you can use this probability to re-score and reorder the translations. And that's the idea. So it's a combination of the baseline system and a neural network. I think we are finishing right on time. For those of you who want to leave, have classes, etc., you can leave. For those of you who want to stay and ask questions, I'll be around. And the other question I have question. is... Question. Sorry, you, you can go. Yeah, okay. Uh, can you explain the uh, ensemble of five reverse LSTMs? Like, what does it mean when you combine five of them? Do you train five LSTMs separately and the output is re-ranked somehow? Yes. So that's a good question. What do we mean by ensembling models? First of all, you need to train five different models. What are you going to change when you're doing that? Maybe 
you change the dimension of your age, okay? Wherever you had a hyperparameter, you can change it. Maybe the learning rate that you use for training these five different models is different. Maybe you initialize them differently. So these are minor modifications to the entire idea, but then it's gonna give you five trained models. Those five trained models are gonna give you five probabilities here. There's gonna be P1, P2 up until P5, and a simple way to ensemble them is to just average the probabilities that they're getting out with it. And the idea is that if you have five models that are voting, even if they are weaker model, once they vote, the collective wisdom is going to give you a good translation. Okay, it's like having five experts sharing their opinions. That's actually how democracy works. So the idea is that maybe if a lot of people collaborate, the outcome of that group is going to be the correct answer or a correct answer. So that's an answer question. Yeah. So basically, if out of those five models, two of them are voting on the same sentence, and the other three are voting on three other sentences, then the first sentence that had two votes will be chosen? Yes, but these votes are going to be soft votes. They are not hard. By soft, I mean, you know the weight that the first model is giving to this translation and maybe 1,000 other translations. One of them is having a probability of 0.8. The other one is having a probability of 0.1. And then these probabilities are going to add up to one. It's not like you pick one of them, but then it's a soft vote. You say, I favor this option with this number. I'm this confident that this is a good translation. Okay? Yeah, yeah, uh, totally. Uh, I was kind of going on this sense that uh, uh, weaker models vote together on something. So if two of them are certain about one um, sentence, then that sentence will be higher average than the other ones. Yes, that's correct. But these are not weaker if you think about them. I mean, uh, all of them are five deep neural networks making a decision together. Yes, Is any other questions? Intuition behind that, that just, you can encode more information in five separate networks than one network? Uh, like five networks can learn more nuances about language separately. They'll have different understandings and basically you just pull them together. Probably that could be a good explanation of why ensembling works. But ensembling is a big idea. It applies to, it's a big idea of machine learning in general. Whenever you hear random forest, for instance, there is an ensembling going on, ensembling of trees. Now you're doing ensembling of neural networks. Thank you. Yes.